I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see down there below you or the very first impressions that, that you have as you come back down to the surface. A castle. Okay. And what do you see around yourself? I see people. And some people are in horses. Mm -hmm. I see people around me. I see a guy smiling at me. He wants to talk to me. Okay. Now before you talk to him, I'd like you to just look down at where your feet are and see if you see what you're wearing on your feet. Boots. Okay. Now, are they... what color are they? Black. Okay. And I'd like you to just lift your eyes kind of and see, do you see what you're wearing on your body? Does your body feel male or female? Male. Young or old? Young. About how young? Uh, 25. Okay. Healthy or ill? Healthy. Okay. I feel strong. Okay, excellent. So now you can bring your attention back to the man that's smiling at you. Mm. Do you know who he is? I, I, I feel like I know it, but I, I can't say who it is. Okay. Well, I'm going to count from three down to one. And on the count on one, the information will become very easily, almost magically available to you. You will know what you're supposed to know. Three, two, one. Now, do you know who he is? I want to say Bruce. And what is your relationship to him? feels like we're part of the same group. I don't know what that group is. Okay. Um, we're outside the door. There's a, this is a big place. There's a big, big entranceway. And we're outside and there are other people bowling around. Okay. People seem to be happy. What do you see people doing around you? Uh, it feels like a little bit of a village. Like, like there's... I can... I can... I, I can vaguely see a little uh, places where people sell things like a like a like a a market a market mm -hmm. and my friend's a big guy and I'm a big guy and there are other there, there's a couple other big guys on horses okay now they're wearing it's formal it's uh you know they're I want to say tailored. It's uh, you know, nice pants, nice shirt, nice jacket. Everybody's got a hat. Are you are you dressed the way they are? Yes. So would you think you're part of nobility, perhaps, or a person of a hot upper class? Yeah, I would think. I would think. I don't know about nobility, but upper class. I mean, we have resources. We have fine garments. Where Okay. Big horses. Okay, excellent. And so what I'd like you to do is just let go of those images for a moment and just, when I count from three down to one, on the count of one, you will see yourself standing in front of the place where you live. Three, two, one in front of the place where you live. So tell me what you see. I see a manor house. Manor? Mm -hmm. It's like an English countryside house. It's a big house. It's not a castle, but it's big. Okay. And uh, um, can you go inside? Yes. Okay, go inside and tell me what you see inside. I am in the kitchen from the side door. Mm -hmm. If I walk around the corner, I'm in a, 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 a dining room. Okay. 
So, do you live in this house with other people? Yes, I feel that anyway. I don't see anybody else right now. Okay. So, I want you to move in time to the time when you have a meal. And I want you to see yourself at the dinner table. Yes, I'm there. Okay. So, how many people do you see around you? Maybe eight. Okay. Not counting the wheat staff. Okay. There's a big fireplace in the room, a big long table. I sit at the head of the table. You're at the head of the table. So There's a couple of children of, of, of little age. There's a couple of young adults. There's maybe my brother, another big guy. And are the children your children? It feels that way. And are you married? Yes. Is your wife there? Apparently not. I don't, I don't see a woman. Okay. I mean, maybe she's in the bathroom. Okay. Do you see any other family members that you um, can identify or know your relationship to? I think it's my brother Roman, the other big fellow. And I, the children, one is a girl and one is a boy. They're running around the room. We're sitting and drinking. Okay. And eating. And what are you eating? What's the food? Uh, it seems like chicken or fowl or bird or, you know, that white meat. Mm-hmm. And what are you eating it with? A fork and a knife. Is there any side dish to the chicken? There's uh, root, some root vegetables. I have a potato, I have carrots, mm -hmm. I have cabbage. And you're being served by the servants? It's in a bowl right in front of me. Okay. Yeah, there are servants, there are people bringing stuff. Okay. And those servants live in the servants' quarters? In Probably, the yeah, I mean, I would imagine. I, I, I don't know. I mean, well, you can go there. You can move yourself to where the servants are. Yeah, they do. They live in the house with us, yes. Okay. Yeah, their quarters are off the kitchen. So, I'd like you now to simply know who you are and perhaps what your... You have a title. I have a title. Yes, I do. There's a coat of arms on the wall. Mm -hmm. I have a title. I don't know what it is. What okay, it well, it may come to you. Or perhaps you may hear somebody, somebody address you. Perhaps one of the servants or a visitor to the house. And the title will come to you. Now, do you see your wife yet? And do you know what you do in life? Is there any kind of work I, I, I own a farm. I don't know why I didn't know that. I just, I think I saw it when I was outside. Okay. I, I live on a farm. I mean, I have a big house, but I own a farm. Mm -hmm. And we grow things and harvest it. We raise animals too. There's animals here. Mm -hmm. And are you close to any big city? I think I'm in the country for sure. I know I'm in the country, but I, I can't tell my proximity to the city. But yeah, there is a city somewhere. I mean, I, I don't know. That's just intuitive. I don't, uh, right. I'm, I don't see it. Okay. So I would like you now to go and see if you can find your wife. Or perhaps you can find information about where she might be. I just asked one of the wait staff mm -hmm. if they know where my wife is. The girl told me she thought that she was in our bedroom. So I'd like you to go to your bedroom now and find out if your wife is okay. There she is. 
this, okay. She's blind. Mm -hmm. She seems to have just gotten out of the bath, but she's getting dressed. Is she getting ready for dinner? I think there's something coming later. It looks like she has a she's gonna wear a pretty dress, a formal dress. Mm hmm Are you going out with her? I think so, yeah. Tell me about your relationship with her. Do you get along? I feel like she's the love of my life. Mm. I feel affection just from her look at me. She's radiant. Does she feel the same way about you? I feel that from her, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She gives me a warm smile. Ah, and a nice embrace. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to just allow the images to fade for just a moment. And I want you to move to the next important date and time in this lifetime and from the on the count from three down to one on the count of one you will be in the next important date and time in this lifetime three two one now what do you see around you I'm in the church okay and what's happening in the church so, mm -hmm. I, I feel Important. I don't know why I feel important. I'm with my wife. I, people get, smile and nod in acknowledgement. Is this event about you or your family? I, I, maybe. I, it might be a wedding or something because I feel like I'm, as I walk up the aisle, I'm, like I know everybody and everybody knows me. But there's some really important people I can tell, I and mean, I just feel that they're, 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 uh, they're all dressed very fine. It might be like even the Victorian age. So I saw a girl with that uh, ruffle on her neck. Mm -hmm. And so do you see or hear anybody, do you hear anybody addressing you? Do you hear your title and your name? My Lord, my Lord, yes. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Are you older now? Yes, I am. Okay. And do you see your children? I think I'm at a wedding. I think it's, it might be my daughter's wedding. Okay. And I'm, I'm with my wife and we're just going to the front row the church in the pew. And do you see your daughter? I do not. Okay. I sense, I sense she is, I see the, I see the groom. Okay. Is she going to walk down the aisle by herself? Oh, I, I, it seems as though I'm getting ready to go back and kissing my wife. Okay. Are you going to be walking your daughter down the aisle? Yes. Okay. So move to that moment when you walk down the aisle. Oh, I'm her. back in the vestibule or whatever, and all the girls are, uh, you know, excited, and the, the music's going to start in a minute. Okay. I, I I'll be the last one. All the all the uh, all the all the girls in the dresses are are. They're, they're starting, the, um, the guys are there holding up, giving their arms. Okay. Walking them down the aisle, bridesmaids. And as you walk your daughter, how do you feel today? I'm very proud. <laughs> oh, I'm very proud of her very much. Yeah. I sense that the man is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, he must have been, I must have given my approval. Very proud. She's a beautiful girl. She's she's brunette. I'm brunette. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I know I'm brunette, but I am. Beautiful. 
I'm so happy. You know, it's joy. It's just... Mm -hmm. I can feel a huge smile on me. I'm just grinning from <laughs> ear to ear. And I'm full of myself. I'm just full of joy and love and pride. Beautiful. Now move to perhaps a year after the wedding. Now tell me, where is your daughter now, and how is she doing? She's in. A, she's in our little house. She's. It's a. Uh, it's like it's like a. It's like it's got bricks. It's got some wood. It's got like a thatch roof. It's beautiful. It's it's not big. It's small. It's it's. Uh, I mean, it might have two bedrooms and a, and a living room and a dining room, kitchen type thing. Mm -hmm. It's little, but they're happy. It's our starter house. Wonderful. Are they going to be um, managing a farm too? I think it's on my property. I think. Okay. I think I have a lot of land, and I have a big house, and I have a farm. And I think they wanted to live there. I mean, they could have lived in the big house with me, but I think they wanted to. Okay. And how is your wife doing? She's very happy. Good. So I'd like you now to let the images fade away. And I want you now to move to the last day of that lifetime. The last day of that lifetime. And on the count of one, you will tell me what you see. Three, two, one. Last day of your lifetime. Where are you? I'm dying. I'm in bed. Okay. My wife is here holding my hand. Do you know how old you are? I think 63. Mm -hmm. I'm old though. Right, of course. I mean, I feel weak, but I feel, I feel my wife's hand and the joy of having been with her. And, and, and I'm going to lose that. And that's what I'm missing. And I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And do you know why you're dying? Are you sick? I don't know. I don't. I just. I feel sad because I know I'm dying. Why am I dying? <sighs> Something happened to my leg. I think I have an infection. Was it an accident? I Are you being treated by a doctor? I am. I have. I yes. I have this. My. Uh, Seems like my household staff is all around me too. I don't see children. I just with my wife and older people. But I don't know. I don't know what happened to my leg. Is that your right leg or your left? My left leg. Left. <sighs> and how is your wife reacting now? She's steady as the northern star. She's gentle and affectionate. <laughs> oh, and she just beams at me. Oh, just, yeah. She tells me I've been the best man I could have ever been for her. Yeah. Oh. Just allow your spirit to gently leave your body. Just allow the sorrow to pass away and just feel the, feel the freedom that your spirit is now experiencing as you leave the body. Is that what you say when you... So I said there. That you will always love her. Yes. 
Now I want you to look back from the side of the spirit. Look back on this lifetime that you just left. As you begin to gain greater wisdom and greater perspective, being able to see the bigger picture. And tell me, what was the purpose of that lifetime for you as a spirit? What did you want to experience in that lifetime? I definitely wanted what I had. I had this beautiful relationship with this woman. <laughs> she, she was gracious and kind. And uh, I see her lying on my body now. That I'm out of my body. Oh, I miss her dear girl. So just allow this feeling of sadness and sorrow to just drain away. Instead be replaced with a feeling of comfort and peace. That's right. And you can now observe and look back, but not be caught in those emotions. And begin to feel simply the love that you will continue to have and will continue to hold for the people that remain in that lifetime. So having a beautiful relationship, experiencing a family in a beautiful relationship was the purpose of that lifetime. It really was all that mattered to me. I felt like I helped other people. I don't know why, but I did. I just feel that I was a giver. How did you help other people? In what way? I had means. I, I would help people. I hired people to work the farm. Mm-hmm. Now, was there a connection with your wife that you that continue to reunite again? Oh, I would, I would think so. Okay. I would think, I long for it. Okay. This is a girl who accepted me and wanted to be with me. I could see it in her eyes. Okay. I'm intoxicated. Very good. And now I'd like you to just allow those images to fade away into the background. And as you take a breath, you begin to as you experience further and further the beautiful the healing and support. I'm going to ask the cloud to continue to drift and now they're and appropriate float. date and time. float and drift for you to look at and examine. Place it in could time. be for you to look at back and in time. And the cloud now begins to slow down as it approaches that relevant place and time. And when you reach just the like surface, before, tell me what you see. I'm in Egypt. Mm -hmm. How do you know? I see it. I'm, I'm wearing sandals. I'm, I'm, I'm bare chested, but I have a, I have a draping cloth. I have, I'm, I'm at the, I'm somewhere important. I mean, I'm somewhere that's important. It's, I serve the Pharaoh. You serve the Pharaoh. I serve the Pharaoh. In his halls, or in his place. I can see the pyramid out the one window. Okay. So, I don't know which pyramid it is. Okay, so I'd like you to simply just 
look at yourself again. You said you're wearing sandals and and what do you wear on your body? Like 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 pants, but they're not pants, they're it's like a dress pant. Mm -hmm. I have a armband on made out of gold. Mm. And do you have a male or female body? I have a male body. Young or old? I'm sorry? Young or old? I'm young. And are you healthy or? Yes, I'm vibrant. I feel very strong. Okay, good. And so you serve the Pharaoh. What, a, what function do you serve? I think I'm a doctor. Okay. So. Where are you at this moment? Are you inside the building? Yes, I'm standing in a room that looks like it's made out of marble. Marble. Okay. There's candles. There's seats, like a couch, a couple of couches. Mm -hmm. there's, there's incense burning. Mm -hmm. There's like a okay. library on the wall, it's, but it's all scrolls, or not books. Of course. And is this um, a public place, or is that somebody's room? I, I believe it's, a, it's not public. There's nobody else here with me. Is this a place where you live? I may well live. There's a big table that I just see. Mm -hmm. It may well be my residence, yes. Okay. So as a doctor, what can you tell me something about your philosophy of healing or how do you what approaches you take to to heal? I'm assuming you're healing the Pharaoh. Pharaoh's personal physician. He's the uh Rise, my God. Mm -hmm. I know. I know that the healing starts in the mind. Okay. I know that God gives us the increase, but the mind is the builder. Okay. And how do you use that in your healing practices? Do you use any medicine that you do along with that, or just the incantations and blessings? Yes, I have. There are different sized bottles of different something. It could be medicine, I suppose. I my desk, my table. Okay. So the medicine is just one part of it. Counselor to the Pharaoh. What do you counsel him on? Things emotional. He's strong, but he has great emotion and he finds that to be weak in himself. I counsel him that that's not weakness. So you see the value in emotional. Expression. I feel that feeling is life. We feel this is this is how we know we're alive. We feel. Mm -hmm. And is the Pharaoh still young? Yes, he is. He seems maybe in his twenties, early twenties. Okay. And what is the name of this Pharaoh? Khufu. Khufu. And as the doctor, how, what is your position? Are you, is your position elevated at court? Are you treated? I'm treated with respect by everyone. Mm -hmm. I feel lonely. 
Why is that? I feel like intellectually the Lord, I don't have many peers. Do you have a family? It doesn't seem as though I don't, I, I haven't, uh, that didn't even, I didn't think about it until you just asked. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I'm alone. I'm not lonely, I'm just alone. Right. I think I, I'm a little grumpy. Is that because you're alone? Maybe. So what I'd like you to do is simply allow those images to fade away and on the count of one, you're going to move to the next important date and time in this lifetime, the next important date and time in this lifetime. Three, two, one. Tell me what you see. I see a big, a big ceremony. There's a parade. Mm -hmm. The pharaohs on his chariot. Okay. His bride rides behind him. I'm on a horse. Okay. Which is odd. Why is it odd? There's a lot of camels too. Okay. Do you usually not ride horses? I, I feel like I do. I don't know, it just struck me as odd for a minute. Okay. I don't know why. And where is this parade going, this procession? There's a, an avenue. There's thousands of people lining the streets on all sides. Mm -hmm. It's like a jubilation. Uh, we're celebrating an anniversary. Of whom? What is the anniversary? I think it's a, I think it's a high holy day. I think it's, I think we're celebrating God. Okay. The Ra. Ra. Mm -hmm. The Pharaoh is divine. Mm hmm. Celebrating the Pharaoh. We're asking God to bless our our crops with rain. Okay. And what else is happening as part we're of this? Stopping. We're getting off and going up a bunch of stairs. Okay, and where are you going? There's an outdoor platform or stage. Mm -hmm. We're all assembling on the stage. And what are you doing there? I'm waiting for the Pharaoh to speak. So move now to the time when he speaks. What is he saying? I'm happy for the Pharaoh, though. I'm, I seem like I'm always in proximity, but not really part of not part of his family. I'm not. I don't. I don't sense that I have a family this time. Mm -hmm. Do you dedicate your life to the Pharaoh? That may well be. Uh, I think I'm much older than him. How old do you feel you are right now during the celebration? Mm. 
Maybe my late thirties. Something like that. And is he still in his twenties? Yeah. Okay. I think he thinks of me as his dad a little bit. He's very happy with his bride, the queen. Very good. And I'd like you now to just allow those images to fade, and on the count of one, you're going to move to the next significant day and time in that lifetime. The next significant day and time. Three, two, one. You're there. What do you see? I'm trying to, I'm trying to heal the, the pharaoh. He's so wrong with him. Okay. Tell me what you're seeing or sensing. or. He's been stabbed in his abdomen. Okay. And I'm packing his wound. I've just cleaned it, apparently. Was, did somebody try to kill him? Yes, apparently, with a spear. Okay. I don't see the, I don't see that. I just, I just knew that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. And how is he doing? Do you think he'll make it? I do. He's in pain. But I've, I've been able to stop the bleeding. And do you have anything to help his pain? I do, I have. I do. What do you use to help with the pain? It's liquid. I, I don't know if it was alcohol or... Uh... Do you give it to him to drink? Or? Yes. Okay. And who else is there? couple of servants. Mm -hmm. It's just me and him. I'm reassuring him that if he does, if he takes care of himself, his, his wound will heal. It's a pretty big wound. Mm -hmm. It's like eight, ten inches long. Well, it didn't, um, it didn't damage any internal organs? I, I don't sense that. I, it, it's in his side. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Now, do you have any notion about why he was stabbed? What was happening? No, I don't. Okay. Allow these images to fade. And on the count of one, you're going to move to the last day of this lifetime for you. The last day of this lifetime. Three, two, one now. So what do you see? I'm on the top of a cliff, staring at the ocean. And why? Why are you there? I know I'm going to die. How is that going to happen? I have an illness. What is it? I don't know. T tuberculosis or infection of my lungs. I. It's been slowly killing me. Okay. I have given up hope. How old are you now? Fifty. Mm -hmm. Are you still serving the Pharaoh? I don't know. I, I feel right now that I, I know that I'm leaving. But I, I feel very alone. I'm, I'm high above the, I'm high above the ocean. Are you planning your death? No, I, I just know I'm going to die. I'm not really afraid. I have part of me wants it. Mm -hmm. I'm in pain. Where does it hurt? My chest. Okay. And so move to the next, to the last moments of your life. Are you still on the cliff? Yes, I'm laid down. Okay. And allow your soul to gently float out of your body and just pass through the veil, leaving the body and beginning to feel this sense of expansion, sense of remembrance of who you are, freedom and healing. No more pain, no more loneliness. And as you look back on this lifetime,
from a soul perspective. Can you tell me what the purpose of this lifetime was? What did you want to learn and experience? I wanted to be a great healer. Okay. Do you feel that you accomplished that? I did. I helped a lot of people. I helped a lot of people. And then in the end of my days, or at least the latter part of my whole life, I served the Pharaoh. So you healed people before you became the servant of the Pharaoh? Yes. Okay. I was a doctor before I served the Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to have a family? I don't think so. Okay. And how do you feel about that? Was that part of the plan? I, I, I said so. I was frustrated that I didn't have a wife. I was, I was unique. I was, because I was a doctor at that time, I was very different than most people. There weren't a lot of doctors. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there, there were, but not a lot. So in a way, you were ahead of your time, more than most people. Yeah, probably. That's a good way to put it. It's probably why I felt lonely. Do you feel that this lifetime was successful for your purposes? I do, yeah. I remember a little jealousy of the Pharaoh and all the pretty girls around the palace. You were jealous of the Pharaoh? I just remembered that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd like you to continue with your healing, just floating and drifting away from that lifetime leaving the body on that cliff to continue in its own path. And as you float away, simply allow the people in those lifetime to continue on their journey. Find peace find what they're supposed to find. And now I want all of the consciousness and personality of John to once again return to the body and fully integrate back into the body. And I'm going to ask to speak to John's higher consciousness. Do I have permission to speak to John's higher consciousness? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I respect the power of the higher consciousness because I know that it takes care of John's body and does a very good job of it. I also know that the higher consciousness has the records of everything that has ever happened to John in this lifetime, in all the other lifetimes and in all the parallel realities he has ever experienced. So I respect the power of the higher consciousness and I always ask for permission to speak and ask questions of it. So do I have permission to ask you questions? Thank you. I know that you could have brought forth many different lifetimes for John to see today. But you chose to bring forward the lifetime of, uh, of the Lord in Victorian time, who had a farm, and then a doctor during the Egyptian time who served the Pharaoh. Can you tell us why you brought those two lifetimes? for John to look at and examine. He worries a little bit about things now. And he, these lives show him that he was significant. Okay. That he will be significant again. In a spiritual way. Now, are those two lifetimes 
relevant to him in any other ways for the experience he has now in this lifetime in terms of relationships, in terms of his work, uh, in the To be with field. a woman that loves you is a very real possibility. Mm -hmm. Is that woman in his life, in his life now? Yes. Does he know who it is? And it was there a connection between him being a doctor in Egypt and the work that he does now? He's in the healing arts now, so it's similar. Mm -hmm. Has he had other lifetimes in which he continued that line of work? Helping yeah. others? Yes. So what is the purpose of his current lifetime? What did he come to experience and learn this time around? With God all things are possible. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there anything in particular he intended to achieve? Or just that, that knowing? Feed my sheep. To help others is the greatest ambition. And he's definitely helping people now, isn't he? It's a driving force. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, John wants to know about the people that he has, or he has had in this lifetime, if he has been with them before. Um, so let's start with Sophia. Was she in the two lifetimes that he has just experienced? No. Okay. So the lifetime with where he lived on a farm, he owned a farm, and he had a beautiful wife that he had a beautiful relationship with. Has that soul been in his lifetime this time around? No, no. Has she been with him in other lifetimes? Yes. Will they meet again? Yes. Why was why was there a decision made for her not to be in his lifetime this time around? She chose a different path. But when you, when, when both of them shed their bodies and they return to their soul families, then they reunite again. Yes. In that lifetime, is there anybody um, who remem he remembers from that lifetime that has appeared in his current yes. life? My brother, he was with me there. Okay. And who was he? He was my brother in that life. He was the brother, too. Okay. What is his role in your life this time around, in John's life? Uh, very close. Best friends. Okay. Now, from the Egyptian life, It didn't sound like John made close connections with anybody. He had many friends, intellectually but not emotionally. Mm -hmm. He was working on his own karma for prior, prior lives. And what was he working on? He concentrated on service. He had been selfish before that. I see. He was a taker. Mm -hmm. So was this a, a turning point in his karmic experience? Yes. So any people from that lifetime that he has in his current experience? One of the servants 
Mm -hmm. When he was a doctor, was his father. And they are in the same family soul group? Yes. Okay. So the father was the servant. Um, what about his mom in this current lifetime? What other life experiences they've had, they have had together? His mother with his sister. In which lifetime? The time that he spent in England. And is there significance to the type of relationship they have this time around? He seeks a close emotional bond. He did not have that with his mother. Mm -hmm. He was also an emotional counselor to the Pharaoh in the time of in Egypt. Mm. So is emotion something that is important for him yes. to stay with? Okay. In what way? Mm. Our beliefs shape our thoughts and our thoughts shape our feelings. Mm -hmm. Which can be good or bad. John has learned to focus on the good. So he's doing well. How can you tell me if um, his current sons appeared in either of those two lifetimes? Yes, this is father. When he was the, the doctor for the pharaoh. Mm -hmm. With him before. But Not in those lifetimes? Not in those lifetimes. Okay. So now tell me about so was she in, in those two lifetimes that he brought up? Yes, she was in she was in the Victorian lifetime. Okay. And who was she then? She was his sister. Did they have any other experiences together? Yes, in different lives. Okay. And what was their um decision-making when they were planning this lifetime? What did they want to experience together? Happiness. Okay. Loyalty. And they're able to provide each other with that? Yes. Wonderful. Is there anything that they need to know in order to feel more comfortable with their relationship or safer? Yes, we, we both have trust issues. Mm -hmm. You, they will heal by trusting. They're both good for each other. Now it seems that the two lifetimes that you brought for John to look at, in the first one, the focus was on the personal connection and personal happiness and joy and the second one was on the intellectual connection and helping others. Is there, um, am I wrong that in this lifetime he could bring both sides together? Yes, you're right. great strength, intellectually and emotionally. Mm -hmm. He's in love with the idea of love. Mm -hmm. And he can experience it now. Absolutely. Wonderful. So thank you. I'd like you to ask about one more person. John's mentor, George. What was his role in the current lifetime for John, and, and where have they been together before? They were brothers in France. Okay. It was a rekindled long friendship. Mm -hmm. George is a great blessing to John. John gave a great blessing to George. 
And are they from the same soul group? Yes. And they will continue to be connected? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Now this lifetime that you mentioned in <coughs> France, what was that lifetime about, briefly? George was a professor in that life. Mm -hmm. John was a book writer. And about what time period was that in? 1700, 1760. Mm -hmm. 1770. Much, much civil unrest. Mm -hmm. Was there a specific purpose to that lifetime for John? Yes, he was very interested in esoteric things. He wrote about many of them. So he has that knowledge in his Akashic record that he can access through meditation, perhaps? Yes, indeed. It's available to him. Wonderful. Is that something that he needs to yes. bring up? Yes. Okay. Much more. And what's the best way for him to do that? Meditation. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. I have a few more questions that John wants to know about. He so it seems that in this lifetime he has a very strong passion for helping others and staying in the health field. And um, he's starting a new company. He wants to know if the partnership, if the long-term partnership with Jeff that he's starting, if it's a good fit and if it's going to have, um, if it's going to be strong and positive for the company and for him. His friendship with Jeff will be one of the best that he's ever had. Okay. Travel the world, creating opportunities for other people. Wonderful. He's on the precipice of big change. Okay. And in what direction will that change take him? The direction of his dreams. He wants to be successful to help other people. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular that you want him to know at this point? about the next steps he should take. Continue to have faith. Continue to believe. Continue. Good. Now John is a um, great salesman. He has a gift for that. And so he was wondering where that gift for sales is coming from. Were there lifetimes before where he sharpened that skill. Yes, he has been many things in many lives. He was a great debater at a college in England. Cambridge. Mm -hmm. He has the power of oratory to move people's emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, with the work um, in esoterics that John has done in other lifetimes, and his interest in spirituality and esoterics right now, has have there been lifetimes where he maybe worked closer with some well-known spiritual figures? He knew, he knew Nostradamus and friends. Okay. Did they meet? Yes. So, okay. Nostradamus was a divider. He, he had great. He, he would tap. He would talk to his higher self all the time. 
-hmm. And did he share that with John? Yes. What was their relationship like? mutually interested in the same subjects and these were somewhat taboo at that time. Mm -hmm. They were very secretive. They belonged to a group of philosophers. This, this Nostradamus was an oracle of sorts. Mm -hmm. John was too. Now, oracles are, as I understand, are basically able to channel the higher selves or higher you know, information that comes from spirit. So, is John able to do that now? Yes, he wants to. Okay. And what does he need to do to make that happen? I simply know that he can do it. Okay. And what would that help him do? Would that help him with day-to-day decision-making, sort of direction in life? Correct. To let himself be true, which way should I go, God? Mm -hmm. Which way should I go? And listen and know. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, before we um, go to, to wrap things up, I'd like to ask you, the higher self, to do a body scan of John and just begin the top of his head and just go full physical scan. And as you do that, just let me know what you're seeing, what you're finding. So I know that you can go in and fix whatever needs to be fixed in his back right now. Can you please do that? Yes. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And as you're doing that, tell me what you're doing. I'm subluxating the vertebrae. Okay. He has a fungus on his toes. Okay. He knows he needs to soak in the apple cider vinegar and lemon. He just doesn't do that. Can you do something now to yes. heal? Okay, go ahead and do that. Now, how is his back doing? Have you finished it adjusted. adjusting? Okay. Yeah, it adjusted just now. Okay, good. Are you still working on his toes? Yes, I'm building up the affirmation in his mind that his pH level is much more alkaline than a sick. Okay. Now as you continue to do that, because I know you can multitask, is there anything else in his body that needs attention? Not physically, but emotionally. Okay, what is that? Believe that you and I wonder if you can allow him now, or that part of him that is still with his um, soul family, to get greater access to his soul family right now. Perhaps see them around him. That part that is not on the planet, that is still always together. And I wonder if he can now have access to that eternal love and eternal acceptance that his family circle have, holds for him. Yes. Okay. And just let him soak that in and perhaps get and give hugs. 
that exchange of energy that reminds him who he is and who those people around him are, that they are the souls that are eternal and have love for him always. Now, are, are, are they saying anything to him? Yes. What are they saying? They're, they all like Jack. He feels very good about this. Wonderful. A lot of smiles. Hmm. A lot of happiness. Do they have any message for him to take back? You don't have to be so strong all the time. Mm -hmm. It's okay to just be. Does he understand what that means for him? Mostly. His child is scared. Scared of what? His child is wounded, just... Oh. This is a wonderful time to help him heal. All these other souls are... luminous. And these are souls, even of the people that are in his lifetime right now, right? Yes. Okay. okay. His sister really loves him very much. Jeremy was a great help to his sister. She is there. <laughs> What is her message to John? That I'm very lovable, that I'm adorable, is what she says to me. <laughs> I want that. Wonderful. Well, I'd like John to just soak it all in. And when he brings it back into his daily life, he will remember it. And he will feel it and sense it with him. It will not go away. And so this time I'd like him to say his goodbyes to the group for now. They will never be separated. But he will simply come back through the veil. For now. And just allow that veil to close and for the family to fade away. I want to ask the higher self if the healing has been completed for the body at this point? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. And I want to ask as we wrap up if there is any other message that you want to give John at this point before we close. Yeah. Go ahead. Here's my it's okay to just be. It's okay to just be. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what is he feeling right now? <sighs> Part of John's drive is to be loved. He didn't always get it. But, uh, now he has a great chance to find it. And does he understand now that he doesn't need to do anything special for that? Yes. Okay. And so he can feel a little more at peace and more comfortable. Just accept that God loves everybody. Mm -hmm. God just wants us to love Him and love ourselves and love our neighbors. Beautiful. Thank you. So thank you very much for every piece of information that you have shared with John today. 
and I'm asking the higher consciousness to now begin to recede behind the veil. 